Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2022 Bowman Draft Baseball. We're doing a lot of Sapphire early today. Now we got some Super Jumbo done today as well. It's a two box random team break number two. One spot gets you two teams. Only, Bo only first Bowman paper ship, no other paper ships in this by the way. All right, big thanks to this group. For getting, thanks to the people who bought their spots straight up. That's always appreciated. And congrats to the people who won those spots in the filler. So let's oh, double up. Oh, oh. Double you up. All 30 teams are in. Let's roll it. Randomized names and numbers. Three and a one. Four times each. One, two, three, and a one. Got Joe down to Richard. Three and a one, four times for the teams. One, two, three, and a one. Got the Brew Crew all the way down to the Orioles. All right, Joe with the Brewers, Chris with the White Sox, Justin with the Guardians, Jeremy with the Nationals, Todd with the Rays, Chris with the Padres, Chris with the Cubs as well. Uh, well, Chris Phelps with the Padres, Chris Butler with the Cubs, Chris Phelps with the A's. Chris Butler, you have the White Sox. Justin with the uh, Braves, Chris B with the Cardinals, Eric with the Marlins, Darren with the Yankees, Rex with my Dodgers, Todd with the Tigers, Darren with the Twins, Richard with the Reds, Chris B with the Red Sox, James with the Rockies, Todd with the uh, Blue Jays, Chris P with the Royals and the Phillies, Todd with the Angels, Jeremy with the Giants, Chris B with the Diamondbacks, Joe with the Rangers, Chris with the Mar Chris Butler with the Mariners, James with the Astros, Rex with the Mets, Eric with the Pirates, and Richard with the Baltimore Orioles. Let's alphabetize by team. We're going to pause the video just for a moment. When we come back, we're going to see if there's any trades. Then we'll have the uh, two box break right over there. So stick around. We will be right back. After I drop my water bottle. All right, welcome back everybody. A little bit of trade chatter, but in the end, no deals were done here on Thursday the 16th. Two box, random team two. Each spot gets you two. The deuces are wild, as Vince Scully used to say. When there was two men on, Two outs, bottom of the second. for five autographs per box on this. So it's a 10 auto break, not too bad for a couple boxes. Prospect hunting, this is Bowman Draft. And if any of these prospects turn out to be superstars, you could stand to make a really, get a really nice return.
Even if they just become perennial all-stars, I get a really nice return on these. Get them graded, keep these grayed out nicely, even better. And there's our first auto. It's Chandler Simpson, 119 out of 199. That'll be for the Rays, Todd with the Rays. Walter Ford Speckle. Blue paper, Mikey Romero, 75 out of 150. Blue paper for Chris and Boston. So remember, all Bowman first paper will ship. Non-Bowman first paper will not ship. The Bowman first is what you want anyway. Nice Elijah Green and Tamar Johnson Bowman firsts. Elijah Green goes to Jeremy, and the Tamar Johnsons, those will all go to Eric and the Pirates. And we got a trade Lipscomb. 27 out of 499. That'll be for Jeremy and the uh, Washington Nationals. Jeremy Stidham. M must be uh, Jarrett Stidham's brother. Maybe a uh, future Raider QB1 Jarrett Stidham. We've got an Elijah Green. Green for Jeremy. Nice. That's 62 out of 99 for your fifth overall pick. Nice. And we got Michael Knorr. 27 out of 50 gold paper for Houston. It'll be for James. Tamar Johnson paper for the Pirates, that's for Eric. And purple paper, Judd Fabian, 242 out of 250 for the O's. Richard with the Orioles. And Trey Dombrowski, the third, 135 out of 250, purple chrome autograph for James and the Astros. That's, uh, that's autograph three. Looking for two more. And 
we got a Zach Nito, 002 out of 499, paper for, for Todd and the Angels. Elijah Green paper, another one for Jeremy. And this stack right here. And here's our final autograph. Alex McFar McFarlane. McFarlane? McFarlane. That goes to the Phillies. That's for Chris Phelps and the Philadelphia Phelps and the Philadelphia Phillies. Some good alliteration there. We got a Samuel Munoz, 103 out of 250 for the Dodgers. Trumpeted as the number seven prospect in the 2020 international signing class by MLB.com. There you go, Rex. Rex has my Dodgers. Holiday. Jackson Holiday paper will be for Richard and the Orioles, number one overall pick. So you know what? I am going to need a different container for this. Hang on. box for this, not just a regular plastic container. Another Jackson Holiday, this time Chrome Jackson Holiday. Let's see if we can find some parallels of him. That would be nice. That's the big stuff. And we got a Shane, Shane? No, Sean, Sean McLean. 31 out of 75. Fifth round pick for the Dodgers. And it'll be for Rex, the uh, yellow lava. And a Chase Midra, is that our one, two, three, four. Oh, and here's our fifth autograph, Chase Midroth. Can't count. Chris Butler with the Red Sox, last spot mojo. Fourth round pick. Got a Harry Ford to 199. Not Henry Ford, but Harry Ford. Seattle, Chris.
parallel? No, that's just the team colors. Holiday. All right, so Jackson Holiday, Orioles paper, that's for Richard. All right, second and final box. Another five autos. Good luck, everybody. Get these sausage link packs out of here. Good luck, everybody. Let's see what we got here in this final box. And we got Alex Freeland. Tried to trade, couldn't trade Mojo. Dodgers autograph for Rex. Third round. Third round pick, number 170 prospect in the top 200. Maybe he has a good minor league season, gets into the top 100. So we want to see those prospects. So I want to keep that right here so I can keep track of the number of autographs. we got here we got a blue blue autograph jared poland 55 out of 150 jared poland J did i say jade jared poland I'm losing my mind here marlins eric houston with the fish six round pick and we got felix valerio 37 out of 150. Brewers. That's going to be for Joe. Joe Simone with the spot he got straight up.
Tamar Johnson, Chrome for the Pirates, Eric Houston. Tamar Johnson, Paper. And we got a Drake Baldwin. Started from the bottom, now we're here. 48 out of 199. Drake going to Justin and the Braves. There's Christopher Pacciola to, to 49. You'll be the 100. Are you the 100 person? Ask how am I like the new pieces so far? What what new pieces? Pieces of eight? Piece of candy? Piece of pizza? Oh, the Lakers pieces. Well, if they're if using a one game sample size against the against the uh, Pelicans. You know, if the Lakers can play like that here on out, that kind of effort, I mean, they're going to be in every game. So there's certainly a lot of, you know, obviously I'm not sure what's going to happen down the stretch. It's so little time for this team to click together. But, you know, having D'Angelo Russell back was actually... That's actually a breath of fresh air. I think there was so much gloom, so 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 much doom and gloom hanging over. Like there was a dark cloud hanging over the Lakers, you know, just throughout the season because everyone knew that trades were going to be made. Everyone knew that Russell Westbrook was going to get traded. Russell Westbrook knew he was going to get traded, and you know, when you know that a fan base and a front office is actively trading you, I mean, how good are you going to feel? You know, for your club, how fired up could you really be? But now that the trade window is over and, every, you know, whoever's left on the Lakers are the survivors, there seems to be a little uh, a little extra pep in their step. There's Victor Medeiros for the Angels. So just attitude alone seems to be, you know, just extra energy out there. So D'Angelo, there's like a going around Laker fan nation... There's like a, a video of D'Angelo Russell hitting a key three. And then he's, point, he's going down the court, pointing to his chest. It was like one of those threes. They hit the three. Other team calls the timeout. You know, and he's, he's running down. He's skipping down the court, pointing to his jersey, telling the crowd, like I never left. Here's Chase Meadroth to 99. So, like, I don't know. That, that's just kind of a little swag, a little confidence, a little energy that the Lakers just never really had this season. So that, that's that been refreshing. The Lakers also got bigger, too. Size was always an issue for them. So so they were kind of undersized. They were playing a lot of guards because there just wasn't a lot, of, a lot of size in the front court. But now you got big Jared Vanderbilt. You got Mo Bamba up front. You got Rui Hachimura up front. All of those guys, what, 6'8 and up. You know, now there's wingsy sort of forwards who can also shoot the three. D'Angelo Russell can shoot the three. The big men can shoot the three. You got uh, Malik Beasley who can shoot the three. So now, finally, it's such an obvious formula, but finally they've put proper shooters around guys like LeBron. And, and, and Anthony Davis. And now just the spacing looks a lot better. I don't know how many wins this is going to equate, but it sure is just a better brand of basketball to watch. That's, that's what I got to say. So that's the first step. Now let's get to 500. That's the next step. Now let's see where we can land in a playoff spot if possible. A lot of teams to leapfrog, but they can have a good stretch down the way. They can win 15... 14, 15, 16 games down the stretch. That should be more than enough for a play-in spot. And then some. There's Jared Poland. 
for the fish. Yeah, I'm not sure what the Kevin Love situation is. He's going to get bought out by the Cavs, right? I mean, their bench is much deeper now, so they could use a, uh, a Kevin Love, if only as a as an extra body, a, you know, maybe a Anthony Davis insurance, you know, because Anthony Davis is injury prone. You know, he comes back home to L.A. He went to school at UCLA. Did he grow, did he grow up here? He's from Santa Monica? Yeah, he was born in Santa Monica. Yeah, went to Santa Monica, but went to high school in Oregon. I guess he didn't, he, but then went back to UCLA. So he's got a lot of roots over here. Here's some trivia that I didn't know. He grew up, he was born in Santa Monica, but he grew up in Lake Oswego, Oregon, where he was childhood friends and Little League teammates with fellow future NBA star, Clay Thompson. I guess that would have been like the 90s. Was Michael Thompson still finishing out his dad? Michael Thompson was finishing out his career in Portland, maybe? I think that's in the Portland area. Your squad's releasing Pat Bev. They need to go after him. They need to go after him. I think it was more important than what people realize. Yeah, Patrick Beverly is an interesting character. I think the Lakers just had so many guards that they that he was just kind of odd man out, I think. But he's got he's he has some intangibles. No, that that's not something everyone says. Although, if he's on the Lakers, I'll bet they'll say that in the broadcast more often. All right, there you go, gang. That was Super Jumbo, Random Team 2. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.